Hi, and welcome back to the second class in Francis Evans' UOT GMAX Boot Camp course. Uh, in this class, we're actually going to be doing some modeling, uh, which will make for a nice change. And you're going to learn what some of these tools in GMAX do, but not all that many. Let's get started. If you have no texturing skills, you are perfectly welcome to use this texture in there.com uh, on any of your models. It is a crate texture. Uh, it's a really poorly made crate texture, but you can use it abs absolutely free. So for uh, this purpose of this lesson and any other thing you want to use it for in there, you can right click on it. Uh, in this case, this is on our home page and I'm using Internet Explorer. And so I right click on the picture and I can say save picture as. If you're using some other web browser, you'll probably have a different way of doing this. So right click save picture as and out on the desktop I've made a folder uh, which I've named GMAX boot camp and in there I'll just give it a name like texture and I'll click save and I've saved a copy of this texture please don't grab textures off the internet people are very very upset when you steal their intellectual property and we should always be respectful of uh, people's property even if it is really a badly made texture like this one so now we have our texture and we're ready to go and uh, uh, make our box. So we'll start up GMAX. Uh, this assumes that you installed GMAX the way we talked about in the previous lesson. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Please visit our website. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? All right. So uh, up on the top uh, in GMAX, we have a variety of tools and on the toolbar. And over on the right, we have uh, more tabs. They all lead to more tools. And then there's more tools. There's more tools you can shake a stick at. But let's turn on a few more. Go up near the top in the gray area, just to the right of these funny little blobs, which is the materials navigator and editor and stuff. And we're going to right click over here and we're going to turn on the tab panel so that the tab panel will be visible. And the tab panel is useful for mostly for, from my point of view for modifiers. I use that a lot. Oh, there's some other tools I'm not showing in these videos, but mostly I use it to do vector shading. Uh, vector shading is fun, and there's another GMAX boot camp sort of uh, video about vector shading and how to do it. And you can add a lot of detail and color to your models without ever adding a single pixel of texture. Anyhow, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating a box. And by default, you're going to see the standard primitive list over here on the left. And one of those indeed happens to be the box tool. So we'll click on the box. The next thing you're going to notice about GMAX is it's got four basic windows. There's uh, one over here and another one over here. This one's labeled front, by the way. This one's labeled top. And whoa, I'm getting all nauseous. This is a perspective window down here. You can tell because it says perspective. If you mess any of these up, you can right click on them and say views. And from there, you can pick whichever one happens to be, whether it's top, bottom, etc. That way, you can have more than one. Uh, but in this case, I definitely want this one to be the top. Uh, why I know not but we're going to create a box in the top view and uh, basically the center of our world is this little black line so uh, we want to try and draw about as much as we can a square around that line as best we can draw as, as a square now as you draw you can you can change the size when you let go of the mouse button though an odd thing is going to happen so as soon as you got it about as square as you can make it let go of the mouse button and then it's going to be stuck to your mouse, but as you move your mouse, you're going to be making the thing vertically taller. So look in the perspective window in the bottom right. Try and make it as box-like as you can. And when you're done, click the left mouse button one more time, and it stays that way. Uh, over on the right, you have a series of tools which will allow you to change how big this cube is. And we are making the cheapest object possible to submit and sell in there. It has the lowest wholesale and pretty much one of the lowest submission costs. But it has to be under a certain size. And that size, if I'm not mistaken, is one meter. So I'm going to make all these one meter in these boxes. By the way, if it doesn't change its size and shape, it may be that you didn't actually click in another box. So clicking over here again would then make this one take effect. Let's see if that works. There we go. So now I've got this uber small box sort of sitting in here. And it's not quite in the center. So I'm going to introduce you to the Move tool. The Select and Move tool is this tool right up here. It looks like four arrows. We're going to go ahead and click on it. You should see uh, arrows sticking out of all sides of your little box. If you don't, you probably unselected your cube. And you may need to re-click on your cube, small though it may be. 
Uh, once you've got those arrows sticking out of there, it's time to go down to the bottom thing. We're going to put the box in the center of our universe. So we're going to make all, th well actually it looks like Z is actually zero, but we're going to make X and Y be zero. This will put it at the center of our universe. That'll make it easier for us to rotate the cube and look at it. Uh, and once again, it may not take effect until you click in the third box or maybe back in one of these other boxes. So now we should see our cube and it's way small and way tiny in the center. Keep in mind that a person is about uh, 2.4, 2.5 meters tall in there. And this program's default measurement just happens to work out to be a meter. So I, I don't understand why, but it, it just does. So this is a one meter cube would be a base, basically, you know, waist, a little bit less than waist high on your avatar. So it'd make a good chair or something like that. Uh, next step, we're going to learn about some of these other tools down here. First off, this one here is called Zoom All Extents. And basically, it allows you to zoom in all four panels of the windows, the, the perspective, the top, the front, whatever. And when you click that one tool, it zooms you in. It tends to zoom you a little too far. So you may need to either use uh, the magnifying glass is a good one to use. And in the perspective, there's also this field of view tool. You can use those to zoom back out. If you're off to one side, there's a hand tool. And if you're dealing with the three-dimensional panel, I'm just throwing out 10 million things to confuse the heck out of you. But this is the rotate tool. We're going to do all of them one at a time. But for right now, we're going to use zoom all extents, circled in red right here. And we'll go ahead and click on that. And what it'll do is it'll zoom us way too far in. <laughs> GMAX has a little bit of issues drawing with this small of a scale. We'll then just use the magnifying glass. And we'll just zoom out just a teeny bit uh, on some of these things. Sort of works the opposite way you think that it might. So you may have to fiddle with it a bit. If you're having a really hard time with the magnifying glass, there's also the uh, hand. It's called the pan tool. And you can use that to move uh, things so that they're more sort of in the center and you can see them. Um, the rotate tool, which is down here, um, can really sort of mess you up if you're dealing with, with like uh, one of these. So if you grab the, the rotate tool and you start messing this around, uh, it's like, okay, which was the front, which was the back? I can't remember. Okay, I'm already messed up. But you can right click on user, go to views, and put it back to what was this uh, front? This is the front. That may zoom you out a bit. You could zoom in using the uh, little magnifying glass tool. There we go. So we're back. But that rota same rotate tool is pretty darn cool when you use it in the perspective window, and you'll probably use that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and move my cube around so I can see like three sides of it. There we go. Uh, next tool, we're going to go back to the move tool. I seem to have clicked off of this somewhere along the line, probably when I was grabbing the rotational tool. And we'll go ahead and, and we're going to right click on our cube. Now, I can't zoom in and show you this bit, but when you right click, you get a menu. And at the very bottom, going all the way down that menu, is when it says convert to. And then what we're going to select is convert to editable mesh, which is on the right. And we click that, and it converts our cube. And the tools on the right-hand side of the screen are all going to change. Uh, and basically, we've got our cube, and we're ready to start messing around with it and applying our texture. So we're going to go up to this modifier list, and we're going to pull this triangle down on the modifier list. It's appeared here now that we've right-clicked. By the way, if you are having problems right-clicking and converting to editable mesh, uh, it may be that you're running another program behind here, like there, or uh, iTunes, or Internet Explorer, or whatever. So if you see this menu flickering, it probably means you have some other program running either behind or in the background, which is interfering with it, and you may need to quit to do this. Or um, move this off of the window. Anyway, so um, we've right-clicked to con convert to Edible Mesh. We're pulling down the thing on the right, and we are going to go down to one called UVW Map. Please note there's several that start with U's and several's with V's and W's, but this is UVW map. And that's the one we want. If you get this right, you should see this little yellow line. And the yellow line shows how the texture is going to be applied to the cube. In this case, it's going to be a picture that shows up on the top, and whatever's on the edge of that pixel will be stretched straight down to the other. So basically, two sides are going to have our, our crate texture on it, and the others are going to be kind of fuzzy. Uh, next thing you need to do is have your little window open. Uh, oh, did we not save the uh, picture? Oh, we didn't save. I didn't save this. I think I told you to. So let me save the picture. Yeah, GMAX Bootcamp. There it is. Cancel. All right. 
GMAX Boot Camp. Oh, here it is. That's weird. It wasn't showing up a second ago. All right, so GMAX Boot Camp. Here's my texture. Hopefully, I'll edit that out. And I'm just going to grab the texture and drag and drop it. And it has to be inside the orange area. You can't just drop it anywhere on the cube. It has to be inside the orange area. And you let go. And we should be all set. And now you have a cube which looks like this. Next step, though, it's not very good because it's got the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the uh, it's stretched out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply this evenly to all the sides by selecting the type of mapping. Instead of just a planar map, we're going to apply a box. And we click box. And now we should have basically all of our cube sides are going to be mapped exactly the same. And they should look just fine looks good oh let me show you one other thing since we've been rotating in this tool right window right over here whichever window you've currently been rotating in or, or working in you can use this tool this makes that one particular screen fill the whole screen that's really good for detail work by the way uh, if you click it again it goes back to normal by the way all right uh, let's see a couple more things then we're gonna save our file let's save our file so we're gonna go to the file menu and select save now this saves a GMAX model. It doesn't save a model you can open in Previewer. But we're going to go Save. And we'll just navigate our way. You know, once again, the Previewer likes really short paths. So uh, I'm just going to put mine on the desktop of that folder I made called GMAX Boot Camp. And inside there, I'm just going to name it Model 1. Or maybe, it's probably a good idea to give it a, a decent name. Cube 1 or something. Or Crate 1 or something. Um, anyhow, uh, oh! and some texturing tips so let's do that we're gonna go up here and change two more things before we're done with this lesson this one here uh, is uh, the what do you call this the GMAX material navigator that sounds like a very Ferengi type of thing but it's okay and it'll bring up this little window and currently we should only have one texture um, by the way, when you are texturing your objects, don't just drag and drop a texture onto each side because each one counts as a new texture you're going to have to use. And texture budget is one of the most limiting things in there.com aside from collision meshes. Anyhow, basically we're going to click on this particular texture twice and it'll open up its own little window. And here is texture number one. First thing you're going to want to do is give it a different name. Uh, names can't really have capital letters in them. They get wiped out later. So, uh, but uh, it'd be a good idea to put like uh, your initials or your name on just on the first texture. If you have more textures in your object, you can name all the other ones whatever you want. But in this case, I'm just gonna put like F7. That's like my initials. If you had like, if you were, you know, had like. Um, like a three-letter set of initials for your company, it'd be really good, or your business, it'd be really good to put them in there. And then this is going to be crate. So it's just 